Jensen, I need to speak with you. Meet me in your office right away. I'd love to, Francis, but I have to debrief Sarah first. I suppose you could, or you could hear what I have to say and see if that doesn't change things. Pritchard out. today. Retired millionaire Hugh Darrow was spotted leaving an upscale hotel in Prague today. The same hotel that was concurrently hosting a three-day conference for UNESCO. This sighting comes barely three days after VersaLife CEO Bob Page was also spotted powwowing with United Nations delegates, this time outside the international organization's New York headquarters. I don't know about you folks, but it suggests to me that we may be finally seeing some action in the ongoing debate over human enhancement technology. Why else would some of the world's foremost experts in augmentation sciences be meeting with delegates in secret? This is Eliza Kassan reporting to you live from PICUS. We need everyone on high alert. It's not only the pro-ogs who might want to get a Taggart, but the ones against them, too. You're saying that pro-human activists might see this visit as treachery? I'm just saying anything is possible, so keep your eyes out for suspicious characters. Right. No one relaxes until Taggart and his entourage are out of the building. All due respect, Mr. Cannon, I can't believe we're letting Harry get back eye for my hero all of a sudden, but there was just something about Taggart that I found... What do you want? As much as I hate to admit it, I need your help. That signal you shut down in DRB territory, it's been active for almost a year. You're telling me someone outside this company has had access to our network since before the first attack? I've detected intrusions before and shut them down swiftly every time. But whoever designed this particular algorithm is good. Very good. You've told Sarif? See, here's the thing. The intrusions were possible because of a backdoor access into our security system that I never even knew existed. The one Sanders team used to get inside our plant. I've worked here for seven years, Jensen, and this is the first time I've seen that particular access route. David Sarif created it specifically to bypass the firewall. He's hiding something, and I think you should find out what it is. Why me? Because, as far as I can tell, Sarif created that access and was streaming a lot of data through it shortly after your ex-girlfriend suggested he hire you. Excuse me. Mr. Jensen, isn't it? Sir, you have that charity dinner? In a moment, Isaiah. I was hoping I might run into you, Mr. Jensen. Bill Taggart. The founder of the Humanity Front. I know who you are. Yes. Yes, I imagine you do. As David Sarah's top security man, I imagine you have quite the file on me. But I assure you, Mr. Jensen, I am devastated by recent events. Really? I do not support what you and your company are doing to mankind. I believe it's extremely dangerous. But abolishing human enhancement technologies will only be achieved through legal means. I'll keep that in mind. This is your first day back since the accident six months ago, isn't it? Sir, we have to go. What happened to me was no accident. Ah, oh, my mistake. But it must have been stressful facing down a second incident so soon. I imagine it brought back all kinds of unpleasant memories. I appreciate your concern, Mr. Taggart, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. I'm a psychologist, Mr. Jensen. I know when a man is hiding behind words. The flesh may heal, but the mind is not always so resilient. You might want to keep that in mind. Now, if you'll be so kind as to excuse me. I'm curious about something, Mr. Taggart. What is it you hope to accomplish by coming here tonight? I would think that would be obvious. Your company has been viciously targeted. The violence and bloodshed that's occurred, it, it must 
be stopped. But I'm afraid it won't be until men of wisdom and understanding come to an agreement. About what? About the future, Mr. Jensen. This enhancement technology threatens to change the course of human evolution, to redefine what it even means to be human. You think governments can afford to let that go unregulated? You can't stop progress, Mr. Taggart. Perhaps not. But neither can we afford to sit by and watch it happen on its own. Not when we have the ability, the collective will, and foresight to influence it. I see. Thank you for illuminating me. Any time. You're Taggart's aide, aren't you? Dr. Isaiah Sandoval, isn't it? No need to play ignorant, Mr. Jensen. I am quite sure you have a file on me that's as thick as the one you have on Mr. Taggart. You're an outspoken activist in your own right, Dr. Sandoval. When you have seen the things that I have, you find you have no choice but to stand up and be counted. Frankly, I am surprised an ex-cop like yourself isn't more disturbed by the dangers of this technology. Augmentations help a lot of people, Doc. Handicapped, war vets. Yes, but at what cost? My own friend had his life ruined by these so-called enhancements of yours. A man much like you who had no choice but to become augmented. Yet, once he was, too much power can make you do terrible things, Mr. Jensen. I suggest you think long and hard on that. I'd like to hear more about your friend, Dr. Sandoval. What exactly did he do? Nothing. Was he injured in the Gulf? He went on a rampage in a shopping mall, if you must know, hoping to be gunned down by the police rather than face a lifetime battling augmentation addiction. He was addicted to augments? They don't talk about it in those corporate brochures of yours, do they? <coughs> Neuropathy dependency, rejection psychosis, <coughs> Any number of physical and psychological ills have resulted from this technology, and yet, we rarely hear a word about them. I'm sure the literature is out there. No thanks to the throng of corporate lawyers attempting to stop it. Your friend, did he succeed? Did he suicide by cop? No. Bill Taggart talked him down. Athena, you've been at this company a long time. I hope that's not a comment about my age, Adam. No. But I know nothing gets by you. If Sarif had done something that could compromise us. Mr. Sarif has only the best interests of this company in mind, Adam. I'm not questioning that. Aren't you? I've been here since the beginning. I've seen how he built this up from nothing. He cares for his people. He truly believes what we're doing is important. And he would never do anything to jeopardize it. I shouldn't have brought it up. No, you shouldn't have. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy. Boss, we need to talk. Is something wrong? I'm not sure. Did you set up a private access route to bypass the company firewall right before you hired me? <laughs> I what? Pritchard said someone's been using it to access our system since before the first attack. The security measures he and I set in place never stopped them because we didn't even know the loophole existed. Oh. I see. Frank's fixed that, though, right? He has now, but he's wondering why you never mentioned it. Frank's paranoid, Adam. You know that. Can a busy man forget things once in a while? You streamed an awful lot of data through that portal, boss. Right before you brought me on board. Preacher may be paranoid, but I gotta admit, I'm wondering what was in it too. Yeah, as an ex-cop, I guess you would. But the important thing is you found the hole and plugged it. We're secure now. And the information you uncovered in that FEMA facility may actually help us track these guys. So let's just stay focused on what's important. I want to, believe me. I want to catch these guys as badly as you do. But that breach is responsible for every security crisis we've had, including today's. If you want me to stop these guys, I need to know what kind of data they've had access to. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry if I seem evasive. The truth is, I've had a lot of other things on my mind. I'm trying to secure a future here for all of mankind. I can't let trivial security concerns get in the way when people like Bill Taggart want to see me fail. No, you're my best warrior, Adam, and I, and I trust you. 
I know the loyalty you've shown me will only continue as we take this fight into the future. Because that's what's really important, isn't it? The future. Boss, I think we're getting sidetracked here. If you want me to win this war for you, I need to know how badly we've been compromised. I need to know what was in that data stream, in case our enemies accessed it. You think they could have? I see your point, son. That might be bad. I just wonder if you're being a bit paranoid here, fixating on details that aren't critical. I mean, are you so shaken up by what happened six months ago by your failure to make a difference then that you can't roll with the punches anymore? Damn it, Adam. I brought you back in today because you have an immediate crisis to deal with. Questioning me about things that don't matter isn't gonna bring Megan back. With all due respect, sir, I am trying to do my job. The job you hired me to do. The job you even brought me back in for tonight. But it feels like you're getting in the way. Especially when you start bringing Megan into this. I'm not getting in the way, I just... Okay. Okay, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm the one overreacting. If I'm reluctant to share the data with you, it's because there's legal issues involved. Every company has its secrets, son. And Megan's research was a big part of ours. But the data I streamed has nothing to do with her. It wasn't even proprietary in nature, so I don't want you wasting any more time harping on it. The shareholders expect me to take care of it, and I will. So leave it to me to deal with from here. I would like nothing better than to trust you with this, boss. But trust is a two-way street, and the way you've handled this entire conversation so far makes me think that it's you who isn't trusting me. Why, boss? What is it you're so afraid to tell me? Adam, of course I trust you, son. And it's not that I'm afraid to tell you the truth. It's just that, honestly, I'm afraid you'll take it the wrong way. All right, look, the truth is, I set up a confidential data channel for a private investigator, someone who can run covert background checks on people, potential new recruits like you. You what? I had to, Adam. You were a liability, remember? You'd just been fired from SWAT. Now, Megan believed in you, but I had to be sure. Look. I don't want this to come between us. I'll send the files to your computer. You can see for yourself what he dug up. But Adam, you'd better be sure. Why? What do you mean? I mean sometimes the past should stay in the past. Once you see that data, you can't unring the bell. When you're ready, come back and talk to me. We need to discuss our next move. Here, this is for you. It's a corporate passport encoded with your biometrics. I've set up a false flag routing which should get you to Henshaw Island without any problems. You're sending me to China? What about FEMA? FEMA's got nothing to do with this, trust me. We'll have better luck in China. How can you say that? I saw the bastard who killed Megan pulling his men out of that facility. I left one of those men dead in its underground storage bay. I know that, Adam. Frank was monitoring the whole thing. So I also know that before he died, that man gave you an address in China. I want you to check it out. That doesn't make any sense. Look, Adam. There's a reason this company's under attack. You think it has to do with the typhoon or with some other top secret military project that I haven't told you about? The thought had crossed my mind. Yeah, well, it doesn't. The work Megan's team was doing before they were killed, it was redefining what it means to be human. This company, Seraph Industries, was about to lead mankind to its next stage in human development, self-controlled evolution. Can't you see how scary that can be to some people? Sure. I also see how lucrative it can be for some others. It's never been about money for me, Adam. But you're right. There are people out there who don't exactly feel the same. Like who? I'm hoping you'll be able to find that answer for us in China. So get going. Farida's prepping the chopper.
Athena tells me you spoke to Sarath. Did he happen to tell you why he made us look like idiots? I'm handling it. You can imagine how relieved I am to hear that. I'll tell you what. While you follow any lead Sarath spoon feeds you, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and backtrace that signal. That's your pride talking. Still, get back to me if you find something. You meant when? Pretty sure I didn't. Hey, Mr. Jensen. Cindy left for the night about an hour ago. So did most of the others. I guess you know your way around by now, though, right? Did you get everything? We have to get that son of a bitch, Jensen. I think I have everything. Excellent, Jensen. I knew I could trust you. You identified the shipment completely unnoticed, and my guys got their hands on Double T. Awesome job. What else you got? Here's the weapon used in the dealer's murder. Hope you can make good use of it. You bet, big boy. I've got a feeling O'Malley's guy will become a lot more receptive to interrogation once he knows I can pin this murder on him. I paid a little B&E visit to O'Malley's apartment. I managed to hack into his personal account. I think you might want to check any connection O'Malley has with FEMA. There's definitely something going on there. Great work. Found something else? No, that about covers it. I think O'Malley's plan was to start a controlled gang war between the derelict row ballers and the Motor City Bangers. You might want to check into that. Really? All right, I'll keep that in mind when I review all the evidence. Well, that's it. You did a great job. Here's the stuff I promised you. We've got more than enough to nail him now, and I want to make a move before that son of a bitch gets wise. But I ain't got no backup, and I doubt he'll go down peacefully. You've already done the bulk of the job. You want to put the finishing touches on yourself? It'll be my pleasure. Perfect. My contact tells me O'Malley's gone back to his apartment. Go get him. I'll be waiting for you in the alley near the building once you've taken care of that scumbag. Mr. Jensen, 
Don't know why I didn't recognize you the first time. Here to make sure your treachery is complete. You play a dangerous game, O'Malley. Manipulating people, killing them. What's happening here shouldn't come as a surprise. It's an inevitable consequence. In the end, it seems you and I aren't so different, Mr. Jensen. You too seem to consider this world only through cold, hard facts. Whatever. I'm here to arrest you. I strongly suggest you consider a peaceful resolution. I'm afraid I won't be able to comply, Mr. Jensen. But allow me to make you a different offer. I'm listening. I don't resent you for what you did. You played your cards and alliances well, and it's something I can respect. Still, it doesn't mean that I accept defeat. I'm willing to transfer to you a rather enviable sum in exchange for my freedom. All right. But don't try to pull anything. Now, come on, Mr. Jensen. When haven't I been the perfect gentleman? The money is in your apartment on your table. Now, if you excuse me, I have somewhere to be. So? What happened? He wasn't in there. I think he's gone. Fuck! Someone must have tipped him off. If he's really gone, that's it. No way we'll get another poke at a sneaky bastard like that. Ugh, months of work gone to shit. If you don't mind, I gotta be alone, Jensen. I need to wrap my head around all this. Welcome home, Mr. Jensen. Re-establishing security system. Thank you. 
Hey, Jensen. The boss said you were on your way. You're gonna love Hangsha. You've been there? Used to live there. I spent three, maybe four years working in the upper city, and most of my nights having fun in the lower one. You ready to go? I thought I was. How long is this gonna take, Malik? You mean the flight or the fun afterward? Don't worry, we'll be there before you know it. Climb in.